Ladies, gentlemen, and of course, everybody in between, welcome back to Out of Spec Renew. I'm your new host, Declan Cav, and don't worry, Jerome's not going anywhere. We're just co-hosting on this channel now. If you don't know who I am, I'm Declan Cavanaugh. I run my own YouTube channel called Electrek Garage, where I fix old, rare, stupid electric cars. And so I feel like I'm pretty qualified to fix Kyle's rare, stupid electric cars. And so today we're going to be looking at the first project that we're going to be working on, which is this 2000 RAV4 EV. This is an electric car made by Toyota in 2000. Yes, Toyota made this. It's not an EV conversion or anything like that. They made just under 1,500 of them from 97 to 2002. And we're going to dive into this one. This one's broken. So we're going to dive in and see what's wrong with it. But in this video, we're just going to kind of get familiar with it, see if we can figure out what's wrong with it, and just kind of look around this 2000 RAV4 EV. <laughs> The Toyota RAV4 EV started where a lot of other EVs of the time started with the California Clean Air Act. Basically, the long and short of it is California mandated automakers to make an electric car to deal with pollution. So Toyota took their gas-powered RAV4 and they put in an electronic drivetrain. The specs of this car are a little bit lackluster. The motor is only 50 kilowatts with 190 newton meters of torque. The battery pack is a 27.4 kilowatt hour nickel metal hydride pack from Panasonic, which gives it an EPA estimated range of 95 miles. This can go highway speeds with a governed top speed of 85 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 time of... 18 seconds. Yeah, it's not very fast. So you're not going to be winning any races, but there's no but. It's, it's not a very performance vehicle. The RAV4 EV came long before the J7072 standard was established, and so it kind of had to get creative with how it charged. So the way Toyota decided to do the charging was with this. This is a magnet charger, and this is the paddle for a magnet charger. And the way this works is with inductive charging. So kind of like how your wireless charging on your phone might work. So there's no metal to metal contact. So you pop down your charge drawer on your front hood with a button inside the car. You take your paddle, shove it in there, and this car will charge at 6.6 .6 kilowatts. Not very fast, there was no DC fast charging, but hey, that's how you had to charge it. Despite being a California compliance car, this car still has some pretty nice features. It comes with AC and heating, along with heated seats for both the driver and passenger, which is a little weird in this car. It has a charge controller, which is basically so you can decide when to start and stop charging. You got an A on an FM radio with CD, so you know you're getting fancy there. And that's really all the features you get in here. Um, it's comfortable enough, fabric seats. Good headroom. I mean, everything you'd expect out of a RAV4, just now it's electric. While some of the prototypes of the RAV4 EV came in the two-door option, all production versions of the RAV4 EV came in four-door, which means you got back seats, which are a little small, I'm going to be honest. Um, here, let me close the door. So I do kind of got to straddle the front seat. The front seat is in the position I would be driving in. Um, you can put three people back here, but it's not going to be comfortable. Even with just me back here, it's almost not enough room. These back seats are pretty small. While this is an SUV, it does have a pretty short wheelbase. But it's doable. Four people is a realistic number to fit in this car. Any more than that and you're pushing it. While this car does have pretty lacking space in the back seats, one place where it does not lack size is in the trunk. Just like the gas powered RAV4, you just got one big door. And there is a huge amount of space back here. The load lip is really low. So, I mean, this is maybe a foot and a half off the ground. And there is just a ton of space back here. Not to mention that these seats can both fold down and be removed. So there was plenty of storage. This car is very utilitarian. Unlike the gas version, you might've noticed, this car does not have the spare tire mounted on the rear door. I don't know why that is, but you do still get a spare. It's just mounted under the car now instead. Don't know why they did that. Under the hood of the car, you won't find a frunk, unsurprisingly. But what you do have is this big cover. And this entire box is what's called in the community the suitcase. And it's basically a big waterproof box that holds all the electronics. And here on it says, do not remove these covers and or connectors. I'm gonna though. 
Oh boy, look at this fun stuff. Okay, so I don't 100% know what's going on under here, but let's take some guesses. EV control, you can tell because it says EV control on it. Controller, okay. This computer ass assembly battery, maybe BMS. Um, this, oh, this power steering controller because this car does power steering, power brakes. Up here we have our fuses. Down there you can kind of see the connection to the main battery pack. Pretty small wires, honestly. Over here you can see our three phase leads that go to the motor. And you can kind of see the three phase generator thing down here. You got a, just a fan there, I guess, for cooling. Um, we got some more controls down in here. Not really sure what they are. But, I mean, this is really freaking clean up here. I don't think I'm afraid of anything up here being broken. I genuinely think that the reason this car doesn't drive is just the battery. And I'll explain why in a second. But, this looks great. This is cool. I'm going to put the top back on now and pretend I didn't open it. Now I want to show off why I think the battery in this car is uh, donezo. So I put a new 12 volt in the car. We got our Toyota key. No buttons on it. Just a normal ignition. It'll beep at me a little bit here. So I don't know if you saw what happened there, but the ready light here flicked on and off really quickly and you could actually hear a contactor in the battery pack close and then immediately reopen. Uh, we have some warning lights up here. I have the parking brake on and I don't have my seatbelt buckled. But over here we have some more concerning lights. Um, I don't, you don't have to be an, a mechanic to understand this, but car with exclamation point, bad. That means something's wrong. And the big red battery also means something's wrong. The fact that we're reading completely empty on the battery and completely low on our voltage leads me to think that this battery pack is um, not having the best time at the moment. So, yeah, that's a problem. So what's the plan with this car? Well, in a couple of days, I'm going to be getting the diagnostic equipment because this car can be diagnosed. I don't have to drop the entire pack to see its condition. And we'll see how dunzo the pack really is. If the pack can be recovered, I'm going to do everything I can to recover the factory pack because it's just cool. But Panasonic doesn't make the cells and haven't made the cells for a long time. So I can't really get replacement parts for this thing. So if the pack is completely dunzo, um, I'm gonna have to talk to Kyle. Uh, this isn't my car, it's his car. We'll decide the next steps. If I get my way, I would uh, love to put some Tesla packs in here, extend the range, make it a little bit cooler. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, if the pack can be recovered though, I want to recover it. That's gonna be it for this episode. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing, leaving a like and leaving a comment. It means a lot to me. If you like this kind of content, you can go check out my channel, Electric Garage. Link will be in the description below. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video. Love ya.